Uh, this one is lecture number nine, and here we will discuss in detail about uh, multiplication independency of two event, uh, uh, multiplication rule independency of two event, and afterward, if time permit, we, we will go to discuss about total probability. So total probability is very essential in order to understand Bayes theorem. So it is very much related with partition. That partition thing we will introduce uh, in order to understand total probability. So coming to outline of today's lecture. First, I would like to discuss multiplication rule. As I told that it is nothing just a, a rephrasing of uh, definition of conditional probability. And uh, if you rephrase that, then you are getting uh, better application of that definition as a multiplication rule. And further, it can be generalized to various uh, more than two object uh, event as well. So those things generalization also we will see it here. Afterward, we will talk about uh, independency and dependency as well if you are dis discussing independency of events then at the same time also we need to discuss about dependency of event as well so those things we will discuss in detail and if time permit then we will go to discuss about total probability total probability is really very much essential to understand that page page rule so i think we are uh, about to finish this module after that we will go to next module. page theorem would be last one uh, for this model so coming to multiplication rule what does it talk about and how we uh, define multiplication rule? so everyone have already seen the definition of conditional probability so we try to restate uh, uh, that definition and we will see that it becomes multiplication rule what does it in last class i had already mentioned that how conditional um, definition of conditional probability can be rephrased as a multiplication rule so a statement of the definition of conditional probability that leads to a multiplication rule and what is that so we had already seen that uh, uh, the definition of uh, conditional probability it was defined as is the ratio of probability that how much of outcome a is happening in b that b you have already seen that okay divided by probability of happening b so this one was the definition of conditional probability so what we do we simplify from here we multiply probability of b both side we know that probability of b it would be a positive quantity it would be always because happening of b we are talking always that come through some conditioning or partial information so probability of b it would be always greater than zero so that's where we can divide uh, probability of b throughout and uh, in the process of dividing what we are getting we are getting this uh, real statement that means uh, we see that the uh, uh, joint probability of a and b it is equal to uh, product of probability of b into uh, probability of a given b that conditional probability so uh, this uh, everyone might be aware of that this we are calling it joint probability because a and b both occurs together together in common so that's why it, uh, we can call it in joint probability but if someone is saying that no <coughs> <coughs> Someone is saying that suppose uh, A is observed first <coughs> in that process uh, <coughs> through A you introduce conditioning. Conditioning is introduced by A if you are observing A first. But here if you what you see you observe B first so that's where conditioning is introduced by B. That is the uh, situation. So it depends upon your approach <coughs> what you observe first what you observe first based on that you are writing multiplication rule so it is just a scenario for a two event case if you are you are having two event a and b then that is the scenario of multiplication rule so how how we can generalize in this scenario so we suppose that we are having an event a and that happens through a sequence of events that can be broken into C and that means we can say that this event A is happening if and only if one of the several event these events is happening occurs then that means simply we are saying that A is talking about joint occurrence of this n number of event so joint occurrence here we talk about joint occurrence or so how we can find then probability of A 
so just we need to generalize this uh, multiplication rule for here n event situation here it is for two event situation so anyone may come up with idea how we can generalize it <coughs> anyone am i audible how you generalize yeah uh, how you can generalize it so you can generalize it like this way you are, suppose you are observing a1 first and uh, after that you are observing this a2 onward a2 up to a n so what will happen then how what would be probability of a how you will write what would be probability of a suppose you are observing a first a1 first so what would be probability of a it would be probability of a1 that means you are observing a1 first into conditional probability of a2 you can put it comma or you, you can put it intersection there is no issue so all are so you can joint it is talking about and comma is also talking about n uh, everyone might be aware of that so given a1 so in this way now after once you have already observed a1 someone is observing a2 so what would be situation what would be situation here once you have already observed a1 after that a1 you are observing a2 so what would be anyone would like to point out just you are opening up probability of a2 would come here that means here uh, now uh, this is the conditional probability and you have already observed a1 so that's why you are writing probability of a1 now i uh, just focus on uh, a2 a3 onward here uh, among them a2 you observe first so you can put here bracket like this way probability of a2 times probability conditional probability will come here what would be conditional probability what probability of a2 would come so whether probability of a2 would come or something something else will be here anyone because uh, before prior to observing a2 you have already observed a1 you are having partial information about a1 so that's why your conditioning will come here Con conditioning will come uh, probability of a2 given a1 probability of a2 given a1 times probability of uh, a3 onward comma a3 an given a1 a2 a1 comma a2 so you have to just open up uh, things like this way so i might have written it like this way so this is the situation it is coming like so first you have already observed a1 so that's why uh, you are coming with probability of a1 what is the probability of a1 or observing a1 so occurring a1 after that uh, a2 is coming so that's where you are observing probability of a2 given a1 after that a3 is coming so probability of uh, uh, a3 given a1 a2 after that you observe a4 so probability of a4 given uh, a1 a2 a3 likewise uh, an you will observe uh, when you will observe prior to an uh, you might have already observed uh, a1 to an minus 1 so what would be the probability of a simply if i ask what is the probability of a a is the intersection of a is happening through what uh, when all these three are happening jointly then a will occur so probability of a uh, here we can write it like this way probability of a1 times probability of a2 
given a1 times probability of a3 just you have to multiply all these probabilities so first one would be conditional probability uh, just unconditional probability a1 that first uh, a1 you have already observed so that's why that happens to be unconditional rest of the probability would be conditional so a3 so a3 when you observe prior to that you have already observed a1 and a2 so you can write it comma a1 comma a2 or a1 intersection a2 comma and intersection both are same likewise you have to keep on multiplying the last uh, would be what probability of uh, a n given a1 a2 it will go up to a n minus 1 this is the generalization of multiplication rule what we say that that means for this kind of event which happens through or uh, joint occurrence of all these n number of events if a is happening through joint occurrence then we write uh, the multiplication rule generalized multi multiplication rule uh, like this way so but uh, this one is much more important though. just we have expanded this in this form in this form we have expanded so this one is so everyone need to understand it clearly anyone is having any issue to understand this one anyone okay fine so if you understand this one easily you understand this it is just generalization so easily you can understand there would be no answer so uh, we will take few example uh, in order to solve uh, that uh, in order to get uh, application of multiplication rule so defective product so assume that all the uh, assuming that all the conditioning event have positive probability all the conditioning event having positive that partial information first we are getting having positive probability then the probability of a it would be given by that what what i had written here so this is the probability of given we are writing like this way okay so there is a question like in a factory there are 100 unit of certain products 100 unit of certain products five of which are defective then we pick three unit from the uh, hundred unit at random. Here among the hundred, five are defective. We pick three unit from hundred uh, unit at random. Then we have to find what is the probability that none of them are defective. What is the probability that none of them are defective that we have to find. So that. Uh, so in order to solve this problem we have to come up with a specific kind of event so suppose we define ai as the event that ith unit uh, that one is chosen and it is not defective so if a1 means first unit that is among we have already picked three unit so a1 means that first unit is not uh, defective a2 is talking about second unit is not defective a3 is talking about uh, that selected so that what selected we have taken three so a3 is talking about third one is not defective so we are interested in joint occurrence of all these that means a joint the, everyone might be aware of that joint occurrence that means a1 is also first that we have to find none of them are defective that means first unit also would be not defective second would be also not defective third would be also not defective so this is the desired prob probability that what we, we are willing to calculate okay so first we need to calculate the probability of a1 then probability of a2 given a a1 then probability of a3 given a1 a2 okay so those things we need to calculate so what is the probability of a1 that means it is not defective uh, not defective so uh, how many in, in out of 100 unit five are uh, defective so 95 are non defective that is okay so that's why probability of a1 would be 95 by 100 simply empirical through empirical formula we come up with probability of a1 now given that first chosen item was good the second item will be chosen from 94 because one has been already selected from uh, 95 good product okay uh, 
or non defective product so so what will be probability of a2 given a1 it would be 94 by 99 okay so because among the 100 one has been selected and a good one is selected so that's the probability of a2 given a1 would be 94 by 99 likewise what would be probability of a3 given a1 a2 that means once we have already selected two good product product then what would be probability of selecting third good one it would be 93 by 98 so we are having all the probability so tell me what would be the desired probability anyone this is the desired probability just we need to multiply all this and it is just an application of what we call it multiplication rule so just to multiply all these probability first we had already observed a1 so probability of a1 would come then we had observed a2 given a1 then we had observed a3 given a1 a2 so that's where desired probability would be this this is the desired probability very nice probability this is 0.85 uh, very near to one what we call it very very good probability that we say that because 95 are good product and five only five are defective so that's where you are getting another question is coming that suppose a class it is consisting of four graduate student and 12 undergraduate student okay and we are randomly dividing these student into four group in total how many student we are having 16 Four a student happens to be graduate and 12 happens to be undergraduate and we are dividing all those uh, students into four group containing four student okay then a question is coming that uh, what is the probability that each group includes a graduate student each group include a graduate student that we need to calculate so again it is all about uh, how to come come up with the uh, uh, the set of probability so so we are defining here like this way let us denote the four graduate student by one two three four we are giving name to those okay and a1 is talking about it is a student one and two are in different different group a1 the event a1 is talking talking saying that one two three four all these are graduate student okay so uh, even we are defining a student one and a student two graduate student one and two are in different group then a2 is talking about graduate student 1 2 and 3 are in different group and a3 is talking about uh, a student 1 2 3 4 are in different different group group so what is our desired situation so our de desired situation would be a3 what is a3 a3 itself uh, it contains a1 and a2 uh, so that's where a3 you can say that a3 is actually equal to intersection of a1 a2 a3 a3 is because it is defined like a 1, 2, 3, 4, all 3 are and 4 are, uh, graduate student are in different group. So by default, A1 and A2 contain in A3. So we can say that A3 is actually intersection of uh, A1, A2, A3. In that perspective, we can say that. So uh, again, we have to apply a multiplication rule. First, we need to find, uh, first, suppose we are, it is easy to observe A1, then A2, then given A1 then a3 given a1 a2 so we have to calculate these properties separately and after that multiply it and you will get our solution so how we can calculate all these property probability okay so here we are calculating probability uh, that means a1 uh, uh, what would be probability that means it would be uh, 12 by 15 why we call the a student a1 and 2 are in different group as the probability that the student is in the group uh, it would be what what would be probability that uh, a student 2 is in the group of four, uh, a student 1 it would be 3 by 15 what is the probability that a student 2 is in the group of a student 1 2 is graduate student and 1 is also graduate a student so uh, simply uh, uh, a student for a student 2 how many option you would have uh, how many option you would have three option one one has been already uh, we have selected so three option and uh, uh, one has been already selected also from out of 16 so that's why out of 16 mm, uh, so one has been already selected so remaining uh, a student would be 15 so that's why that uh, the probability that uh, a student 2 would be in the group of a student 1 it would be 3 by 15 okay so uh, 
but we our event a1 is talking about a student one and two would be not in the same group so we have to take negation of this one a complement of this situation so complement of this situation would be what oh, one minus three by fifteen so if you solve it what you uh, what you are getting twelve by fifteen this is the probability of a1 that uh, a student uh, graduate a student one and two are different group so we try to calculate this protein in negative sense so or complement sense likewise uh, we are a2 is talking about given once we are having uh, observe a1 a2 is talking about the uh, student 1 2 and 3 are in uh, different group so so in place of calculating this probability of a2 given a1 what probability we will see that we will try to calculate probability that uh, th a student 3 it, uh, it it would be in the group of a student 1 and 2 it would be in the group of a student one and two okay so in how many ways we can select this uh, student three uh, is in the group of a student one and two so it can be done in six by fourteen and further take negation Compliment. <coughs> Negation, if you simplify, it would be 8 by 14. 8 by 14. That's the property A2 given. A1 would be uh, 8 by 14. Now, likewise, also you can calculate property of A3 given A1, A2. So, in the same way you can provide a reasoning like this way a student 4 is in the group of a student 1 2 and 3 in the group of a student 1 to 3 that uh, probability would be 9 by 13 and hence what you do subtract it from one take complement of this uh, complement situation would keep this probability desired probability in 4 by 13 and just uh, multiply all these multiply all these uh, here uh, student the, the, you will get your desired probability yeah. multiply all these you will get your desired probability now we will discuss uh, next about uh, independent uh, event what does talk about independent event so again uh, independent event uh, also carried out the definition of conditional probability so from there we with the help of that we try to define uh, independent event and there are various other definition okay so what does uh, uh, definition of independent event uh, just one situation i will talk it here first so consider we are having a random experiment where two people are flipping coin two people uh, flipping coin uh, okay different different coin each one is flipping uh, different different coin if the person the, the one person flip his coin first and tells the outcome of that to other to other person then whether that uh, revealing is going to affect the degree of confidence in the outcome of the other coin if two people are flipping coin then uh, uh, that first person who flipped the coin and reveal the outcome to other whether the uh, outcome of other person other person will be affected or not whether it would be affected or not no it would be not affected why both are different coin both are flipping independently so that's where independent, these two are independent event if you are taking two uh, coins separately then outcome of each coin happens to be independent to other coin so that's where here uh, that idea of independent nature is coming here independent event whatever whatever getting in first uh, coin first flip uh, uh, of coin uh, that would be independent uh, independent of uh, whatever you will get in second toss of coin uh, totally it would be independent so independent situation is coming like if we condition on the outcome of one event and uh, that uh, doesn't affect the probability of the other event then simply we say that these two outcome are independent to each other so uh, simply we say that uh, uh, independence means uh, outcome of uh, one event is not affecting the outcome of other event then these two outcome would be independent to each other so mathematically how we can define it so mathematically we can define it like this way so if you are having an uh, having two events a and b 
and we will say that a b are independent you, the conditional probability of a given b if you put condition on b okay then probability of a given b it, it is just equal to probability of a that means uh, when you put condition on b it is not affecting the probability of a it is the same not affecting it is the same probability of a so in that case that means uh, happening of b first is not going to affect the happening of a so that's why a and b are uh, independent event likewise also if suppose you are observing a first and uh, uh, after observation of a if you try to calculate conditional probability of b given a and that one is just equal to probability of b then again we say that b and a are independent to each other independent to each other that happening of a is not going to affect the happening of b so that is the situation so if you try to write in the multiplication rule then a and b are actually just uh, what we how we write it it is just a product probability of a joint occurrence of a and b it happens to be equal to probability of a times probability of uh, b given a so because a you observe first but what is happening that uh, happening of b first is not go, going to affect the happening of a so that's why probability of or happening of a uh, is not going to affect the happening of b so that's why probability of uh, here b given a it will be just equal to probability of b that's why we can say that uh, if in multiplication rule if you observe that the joint probability is just given by product of the corresponding probability then also we can say that uh, those two event would be dependent to each other so uh, even uh, all these are definition you can take all these are mathematical definition of independent uh, definition one this one definition two and this one is the definition three so there are three very very variant of definition of independent event you can uh, so if you come up with uh, any of these simply you can claim that a and b would be independent to each other so there is so just you have to come up with as per your convenient to what would be better one okay so further we can generalize the definition of uh, uh, independent event to n number of events so we will say that if we are having n number of event then uh, n number of uh, event it would be independent uh, okay so uh, if you go that uh, like this way one independent wise like uh, if you are observing you have already observed uh, this number of event okay after that uh, uh, you, you are trying to find the conditional probability of ai once you have already observed this one and this conditional probability is just equal to probability of ai then simply say that uh, observation of these at the first level it is not affecting the probability of ai so that's why ai is independent of all these event okay likewise if you uh, you are able to find the probability of uh, joint occurrence of a ai like this way <laughs> joint occurrence of you can write it comma as well there is no joint occurrence of these are just product of individual probability then also we can say that the corresponding event would be independent to each other so that concept is also coming if a joint probability of this n number of event happens to be just equal to probability of uh, individual pro product of individual probability then in that time also you can say that the corresponding events would be independent to each other so this one is generalization what we call it so here we will take few example here Uh, that uh, independence uh, if you talk about independence there are various kind of independence one is pairwise ind independence another one is just independence okay uh, here pairwise means uh, you are taking two event uh, at a time you are taking two event you try to see whether those two are independent or, or not so pairwise so sometimes you will say that pairwise independence is not implying independence and these two are totally different kind of independent uh, we will see it so here question is coming like this way we are having um, two in uh, independent pair coin tosses in which all po four possible outcomes are equally likely we know that uh, if you are doing a tossing of uh, two fair coin unbiased coin or fair coin then all would be equally likely head okay head 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 tail tail head and tail tail so okay now after that we are defining a few event h1 h1 is talking about first toss is head that means what are the outcome in h1 head head and head tail and h2 is talking about second toss is head then what are the outcome in h2 uh, tail head and head head so these are the outcome in um, h2 now we are coming we come up with another 
event d that one is talking about two tosses have different result that means uh, both outcome would be uh, uh, different result that means head tail and tail head outcomes of d happens to be head tail and tail head both uh, in the both uh, toss we see different how uh, okay different result so that's me so now here if you try to see this event h1 h2 s3 these would be pair wise uh, independent this would be pairwise independent but uh, we don't see independency among them itself so how we will see pairwise independent so we need to calculate conditional probability so first we are calculating conditional probability of h1 given d so what would be probability of h1 given d directly i have calculated how much of h1 is happening in d h1 is this one uh, how much of h1 is happening in d just uh, uh, this outcome of h1 is in d that's a probability it would be out of two only this one would be uh, in d that's a probability of h1 given d it would be one by two now uh, and uh, that probability is just equal to probability of h1 what is the probability of h1 if you try to uh, two uh, two outcomes falls in h1 out of four outcomes so that's a probability of h1 would be uh, two by four so if you simplify it is one by two like probability of h2 is 2 by 4 so that one is after simplification it is 1 by 2 likewise probability of d is what 2 by 4 so after simplification you will get probability of d is equal to 1 by 2 so simply we can say that uh, h1 is independent of d because uh, happening of d first is not going to affect the happening of h1 the happening of so okay so that's where uh, h1 and d are independent due to this uh, definition okay due to this definition uh, because conditional probability is equal to probability of h1 likewise if you calculate probability of h2 given um, d so how much of uh, h2 is happening in d so only this outcome of h2 in in d so out of two outcome only one outcome is there so that's a conditional property would be one by two and that one is equal to property of h2 so again we can observe that h2 and d are independent to each other due to this one conditioning on d is not going to affect the property of h2 okay so that's why h2 and d are independent pairwise independent we observe now let us calculate the probability of d given h1 so uh, what are the how much of uh, these happening in h1 so only this uh, one is happening in h1 out of two outcomes so that probability of d given h1 would be 1 by 2 and that 1 by 2 is equal to probability of d so again we observe that happening of h1 first is not going to affect the happening of d so because both probability are same so that's why d and h1 are pairwise independent likewise d and h2 are pair, pairwise independent you can see that this this probability is equal to probability of d probability of h d given h2 is equal to 1 by 2 and that probability is equal to probability of d so again we see that d and h2 are uh, independent so all these are pairwise independent but if you talk about uh, uh, that uh, uh, independence uh, if you take these three together do you see any common element between these three anyone do you see any common element between h1 h2 and d in together is there any common element between all these three event am i audible or not So, okay, okay. So, if there is no common, what does it mean? Probability of, uh, if there is no element in this intersection of all these three events, so probability would be zero. But if you multiply the probability of H1, H2 and D together, that probability is coming 1 by 8. So, uh, zero is not never equal to 1 by 8. So, that's why we can say, say that uh, pairwise here, H1, D, H2, D, and dh1 dh2 all these are independent but in together these are not <coughs> independent so that's why pair pairwise independence is different and independent is different so pairwise 
it may be independent but uh, in together they may not be independent we have to see uh, that this joint occurrence of the and this will have uh, if uh, joint occurrence of probability of joint occurrence of this would be equal to probability of uh, product of individual uh, occurrence then we will say that uh, this would be independent otherwise no okay now another kind of independent is coming as conditional independent like suppose we are having two event a and b and we come up with the one partial observation uh, that we call it event c then with respect to c condition on c whether these two are independent or not so that kind of independency we are calling it conditional independent conditional independent we are calling it so how we define it is we are defining like this way uh, okay it is coming like this way so uh, here suppose we are having a partial information about c and that we are calling it event c and we will say event a and b are conditionally independent if a joint occurrence of a and b given c is just product of uh, conditional property of a given c and conditional property of b given c then we say that uh, a and b are conditionally independent that condition coming through c so one example again uh, we are taking this similar kind of example what we, last case we had taken so just uh, perform uh, two toss of a fair coin uh, two toss of in that case we are defining h1 it is first toss s2 is uh, first toss is head uh, h2 is second toss is head so and d is talking about two tosses have different result the same same uh, problem i have taken it so here we will see that uh, h1 and h2 are independent independent unconditionally conditionally independent but if we put conditioning uh, by d then we see that this would be uh, what uh, conditionally not independent we can see that so in order to uh, find the uh, uh, what we call it uh, conditional independence so we have to uh, find joint occurrence of h1 and h2 given d joint occur occurrence of h1 and h2 given d so what is the joint occurrence of h1 h2 what is the, what is the common thing so in h1 what event you are getting head tail first toss is head and head 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 in h2 you are getting second toss is head that means what are the outcome tail head and head head then if you talk about joint occurrence of h1 and h2 what is the joint occurrence of h1 and h2 what is the common outcome you observe in h1 and h2 head head and do you see head head is there in d there is no such outcome in d so that is simply we can say that the uh, joint occurrence of h1 and h2 are not happening in d is not happening in d so that's the property of h1 intersection h2 given d it would be zero it would be zero okay but we know that uh, h1 given d is having positive property h2 given d is also a positive property that happens to be 1 by 2 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 times 1 by 2 equal to 1 by 4 that can't be equal to 0 so here we can say that h1 and h2 are not conditionally independent condition they are independent but but not conditionally independent that condition we introduce by d so that that approach we are calling it okay so i think uh, other th that uh, concept is coming about total probability so prior to giving total probability we would like to come up with partition of a sample space anyone know what is the idea of partition of a sample space so this one is a sample space anyone having idea of partition of sample space in i think plus two you might have already gone through that concept so suppose this one is sample space <coughs> you call it omega and how you define partition that means you partition this sample space into various subset and you are calling these are a1 a2 
लाइकवाइज ए एन एन नंबर ऑफ सबसेट्स आर देयर व्हाट आर द क्राइटेरिया ऑफ बीइंग पार्टीशन फर्स्ट क्राइटेरिया वुड बी म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव सो इफ यू टेक एनी टू मेंबर ऑफ द पार्टीशन ऑफ द सेट आई एंड जे देन देयर वुड बी नो कॉमन एलिमेंट बिटवीन आई एंड जे इफ यू आर टेकिंग देयर इज नो सो पेयर वाइज डिसजॉइंट वी कॉल इट दिस वन इज द pair wise this one there is no common element between i and j for all i varies from i and j varies from 1 to provided i and j are not equal to here uh, i and j varies from 1 to n and i j are not equal to same if i equal to j what does it mean intersection of uh, Uh, AI with AI itself, it will be the same set itself. So that's why we are putting I is not equal to J. This one is talking about mutual exclusiveness. Second is saying that uh, exhaustiveness. So if you take union of all the <coughs> partition member AI, I varies from. One to n. Then union is giving the complete sample space. Exhaustiveness that we are calling. And there is a third property. What does it talk about? Sure existence of this event. That means property of each AI must be positive. Property of each AI must be positive. then we say that uh, this one is forming a partition of a sample space omega this is the partition have you gone through this partition anyone this idea have you gone through the or not anyone na no. yeah very fine yeah i'm now i'm asking one question if you take a event b and you are having idea of partition of the sample space how we can come up with partition of b b is an event and that means b is happening like this way this is b so anyone can suggest how what would be partition of p anyone b is an event it is a subset of sample space that, that's why uh, b is an event so how we can come up with partition of b any idea what would you once you are having partition of a sample space what would be partition of a event b so partition of b partition is completely an idea that one is coming from your side so partition of b it is implied from the partition of sample space and how we define so we will take intersection of so this would translate to this would translate to like this way mutual exclusive will come like this way partition of uh, b will define like this way if you take uh, interse <coughs> intersection of b with ai and b with aj then there is a no common element between this b intersection ai and b intersection aj that means it is empty empty set okay second is exhaustiveness to p so if you take union of uh, b intersection ai i varies from 1 to n then that union is giving the complete set b it would be complete set b it would be called exhaustiveness with respect to b and third one is talking about that probability of each partition of b that means b intersection ai it is non zero surely it is happening it is not an impossible kind of event so that's why once we are having partition of a sample space from there we can define partition of an event b so one would be translated to this 
two would be adjusting s would be translated to this and three that uh, certain occurrence of the associated member uh, uh, partition member it is talking about certain occurrence probability greater than zero that certain occurrence okay uh, that uh, it is not impossible uh, that occurs with certain probability there would be some probability occurrence of probability so okay other thing we will discuss in next class it is already above 45 minutes uh, regarding attendance just put your number in comment box and if you anyone is having any question you can ask otherwise we are going to wind up today's lecture any question